Greetings all. Now we come to the second section of the text on spaciousness or emptiness practices. So we've already had uh, one whole section of the text on this topic. And then we had a section on classical tantric yoga practices, those found in many other tantras, not just the VBT. And now we have another section of seven verses on spaciousness, emptiness, openness practices. And this section immediately prefigures, uh, precedes the section on bliss practices. So perhaps the author of the VBT intends that we empty ourselves out with these spaciousness practices before we proceed to the ananda or bliss practices, which also includes some practices on just ordinary human pleasure, sukha as well as Ananda. So that's a few weeks away. Uh, let's go deep into these spaciousness practices as the author intended. So this verse, I, I need to paste it into your window here, those of you watching live. Okay. It goes, you can read along with me if you like. Vishwam metan mahadevi shunya bhutam vichintayet tatraiva chamanolinam tatastalaya bhajanam. Which means, O oh great goddess, one may contemplate this entire universe as being empty void shunya the mind dissolves in that very emptiness then one shares in its dissolution so i'll go through the verse again word by word in the english order not the sanskrit order o great goddess Mahadevi. One may contemplate vichintayet, this entire universe, vishwam etan, which means everything, <laughs> as shunya bhutam, as being empty void. Shunya bhutam, void being, <laughs> as being nothing but void. The mind dissolves in that very emptiness. Tatraiva chamano linam. Then, tatas, one shares in its dissolution. Talaya bhajanam. Okay, so the only question of translation here is in the final word bhajanam are we supposed to take this as sharing which it can often mean or are we supposed to take this as um, a worthy vessel which it also means the mind dissolves into that emptiness and then you become a worthy vessel for its dissolution worthy in the sense of um fit appropriate <laughs> and not in the sense of a value judgment so much but I do prefer the translation that I've gone with here. One shares in its dissolution. Uh, it's being the mind, right? The mind dissolves into that emptiness, and then, tatas, one shares in its dissolution. Talaya bhajanam. But let's uh, look at the main concept here. The main concept here is that the whole universe. Vishwam Etan, is void, is empty, is ultimately nothingness. Now, before physics came along, people thought this was a bit nihilistic or something. Um, certainly, one could say it's a bit Buddhist, <laughs> but rather, it's actually not true to say that it's a Buddhist teaching here. Rather, what we have are teachings on emptiness that uh, occur 
in both traditions. Um, and, and we can't really say, you know, the, the Buddhism is more famous for its teachings on emptiness. We can say that, but we can't say that it's a teaching owned by Buddhism, right? It's very much present in these non-dual tantric sources, um, both Trika and Krama and others. But anyway, my point here is that it's not a nihilistic uh, view. In fact, it's an intuition about the nature of reality. And I want to um, read to you from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific Journal, an article called A Universe from Nothing. And this is only one of many articles on the uh, internet that you can find that, that um, teaches this concept that the universe actually has net zero energy, meaning to say that the total energy of the universe is exactly zero. How does that make sense? Well, I'll read to you from this, from this article. Um, okay, so according to the dominant theory of uh, cosmogony and cosmology, the Big Bang Theory, uh, matter, antimatter, and photons were produced in the period called inflation at the beginning of the universe by the energy of the false vacuum, which was released following the phase transition from an opaque universe to a transparent universe. And all of these particles, um, matter, photons, etc., consist of positive energy. But this energy is exactly balanced by the negative energy, that is to say, gravity, of everything pulling on everything else. So again, this energy of all matter and photons and all, all measurable particles is exactly balanced by the negative gravitational energy of everything pulling on everything else. In other words, the total energy of the universe is zero. Quoting from the article, it is remarkable that the universe consists of essentially nothing, but fortunately for us, in positive and negative parts. Um, so I won't go on reading from that article. I'll, I, I'll post it uh, in the group for those interested in the physics aspect. But just to say that this is not a fringe theory. This is a dominant theory within physics, that the net energy of the universe is in fact zero. Shunya. Now, that's exactly why I brought this up, because in Sanskrit, the word shunya literally means the number zero. If you're counting from zero, you go shunya, eka, dvi, tri, chatur, pancha, and so on. So shunya literally means zero as well. So <laughs> Bhairava says to Bhairavi, Right. Oh, great goddess, we're reminded that this is a conversation with the word Mahadevi. Oh, great goddess, one may contemplate, or you could translate Vichinteyet as one should contemplate. The entire universe as being Shunya, zero. Or you could translate void, absolute void. That from this way of looking at things, uh, nothing has ever really happened and nothing is happening and nothing ever will happen because um, everything cancels out. Of course, that's not the dominant view in Tantra. The, the dominant view is that the universe is real. It's a real vibration of consciousness. It's not an illusion. And yet from this um, Shaiva Tattva perspective, right? We, in the previous verse, we had the mention of Shaiva Tattva. That is to say, the perspective of the absolute. From this absolute perspective, the universe is shunya. Okay, now, how do you contemplate that? Well, this is really um, a practice that falls under the category of what's called Shambhava Upaya, the most subtle and diff most difficult to explain of the three upayas or skillful means to liberation, effective methods to awakening and liberation. And so Shambhava Upaya is, consists of practices that either kind of immediately work 
or don't for any given person because there's not really anything to do but just to there's you just invite a possible perspectival shift a possible shift in, in in the way you're seeing things and it either happens or it doesn't there's no work to be done in shambhava upaya in the divine method where there is work to be done in the empowered method shakta upaya and the and the uh, embodied method anava upaya about which i've res written recent blog posts but here then the practice is simply to invite this awareness can you in this moment or in any given moment feel into the absolute void I can, but for many, many years I couldn't. For many, many years that was uh, meaningless, purely conceptual to me. Um, but I really relate to the way that Adya Shanti describes this in his own experience, which, which I've also experienced this as well many times, that it's as if, if you look around, everything you see is like all these objects, so-called so objects, are like flimsy veils drawn over the void. Um, that's just a metaphorical way of putting it, right? That the emptiness, the nothingness is shining through everything and shining as everything. And all this apparent substance and matter cannot conceal this absolute no-thingness, this radiant no thingness. So it's as if everything, but even not just visual objects, but all sounds, all sensations, everything is, um, yeah, like a, like a flimsy veil but drawn over the void and not, not successfully concealing it. Again, that's just a metaphor. So you can maybe feel into right now that everything is nothing. Now, if this leads to a nihilistic feeling in you of sort of empty meaninglessness, then you're still in the conceptual version of this. I promise you. Because when you actually feel what I'm talking about, then everything appears infinitely precious, even though it's true that nothing really matters. But to perceive this, you have to, it's, it's both simultaneously. Everything is infinitely precious at the same time as nothing really matters. Ultimately, everything cancels out, and it already has canceled out, and it always will be canceled out. And yet, the appearance of what appears within consciousness is infinitely precious. And ever-changing, even though, of course, nothing changes, because the net energy is zero, and it is always zero. It's eternally zero. Can you feel into this possibility that whatever presents itself to you calls for your engagement, even though ultimately it's nothing but an appearance within the absolute void? Nonetheless, as my root guru used to say, if it comes to your attention, it deserves your attention. We can attend to all that comes to us as a precious manifestation of the absolute void, the infinite no-thingness.
it can be difficult to tell the difference between uh, inhabiting the concept of voidness of everything and actually feeling it. And that's why I'm pointing to this very specific um, sign that you're actually experiencing it, not just inhabiting a mental construct of it, which is simultaneously, nothing really matters yet everything is infinitely precious. So in this realization, in the realization of Shunya Bhuta, there is no, um, it doesn't mean that you become passive or disaffected or dissociated. In fact, you can lean more intimately into every experience precisely because it is nothing but another expression of one and the same absolute void. And because everything cancels out, there's no fear, there's no reason not to lean into the experience, if that sort of makes sense. <laughs> so in the real experience of this, it doesn't remove you from what people call reality. It allows you to lean in more intimately. So explore this in your own experience, in your own contemplation. As the verse says, there's no actual practice here. One may contemplate vichintaye. One may contemplate all of this, everything you perceive as shunya bhuta being void, being nothing but openness, emptiness, spaciousness. And if you did all the practices in the earlier module on, or the earlier section on emptiness, this should come easier. And if it doesn't, that's okay. <laughs> the next yukti, the next verse has a perhaps easier practice to encounter, but we'll find out about that one tomorrow. Any questions? No, <laughs> unsurprisingly, given the nature of this verse. If you get it even for a moment, your mind goes blank, doesn't it? Quietly empty and open. Enjoy it. <laughs> Om. And I'd like to give a shout out and special thank you to all the patrons on Patreon who have been unfailing in their support. Thank you so much. Sometimes there's more activity on the Patreon page. Sometimes there's less, but the patrons, uh, almost all of them, you know, stick in there and keep supporting. And because of that, um, there's a lot of research and translating that I'm doing in the background that uh, it'll take a while for the full fruits of that. And that's because of the patrons support that happens in this free VBT course, which is a two year long course is also happening because of their support. So if you want to become a patron, you can go to the Patreon page and you get access to a whole bunch of teachings <laughs> for uh, just $25 a month. And if you don't feel like doing it, that's fine too. Oh.